Artificial intelligence has reached the point where it can beat the champions in the game of Jeopardy. The world saw this firsthand when IBM Watson played and won against Brad Rutter and Ken Jennings back in 2011. But what if there is an AI that would go through over 200,000 previous Jeopardy questions and try to create new ones in the classic Jeopardy format? How would you even tell a computer to take these questions without creating a garbled mess of words? Today I'd like to reveal to you my new creation. GPT Pretty. The name's a work in progress. Let me explain. You've probably heard of Elon Musk's many endeavors, one of which being OpenAI. The startup recently published their GPT-2 model for text generation, which could synthesize human-like responses to prompts. GPT created fake stories from describing mysteries of unicorns in South America to preaching the dangers of recycling. Both fake stories, but surprisingly convincing in their writing style. But how can we get GPT to create Jeopardy questions? Let's start with an analogy. Take this guitar. It can play all six of its notes with normal quality with no specific preference to any style. It was built to suit a wide variety of people, so it didn't accompany any specific tone or mood. But what if you wanted to evoke a certain emotion by tuning the knobs on the strings? The masters of guitar go through hundreds of configurations until they reach the one that will produce the sound that best fits what they want to play. Sure, we would play the same notes, but now the guitar would be suited for one specific type of music. GPT-2 would be the equivalent of 57 million guitars with 6 knobs each. Overall, that would result in about 350 million tuning knobs to make GPT-2 into our specialized Jeopardy generator. How exactly could it know which configuration was the best? That's where the magic of AI comes in. Our training algorithm would use something called backpropagation to slowly approach the most suitable configuration of tuning knobs. After a long learning process, we would eventually transform what was once GPT-2 into our new Jeopardy AI. But that's enough explanation. Let's see how our AI actually performed. I think it's only fitting to have the best AI voice read these questions. The name of this company used to formulate the first brand of cleanoids, Kmart. This world's largest crater is called the Gorgon, which probably came from the Greek for the Earth, Mars. The Old Spice Company is a subsidiary of this new spice company founded in Boston in 1972. Campbell's Soup Company. How many of these did you get correct? I'd be surprised if you guessed any of these, because they're all fake. There's no such thing as cleanoids, Mars has no crater named Gorgon, and Old Spice is definitely not a subsidiary of Campbell's Soup Company. To me, these things seem surprisingly believable, even though they weren't actually true. Maybe this shows how much OpenAI's GPT can mimic human language. Some other uses could include writing new textbook chapters, telling novel jokes, or even creating a chatbot. You could try to write fake patents, or even entire movie scripts for a previously unimagined story. But malicious users might create mass campaigns of spam, fake news, or even propaganda. We might see this technology used in robocalling or targeted phishing attacks. In the end, the question lies in what we, you will do with fine tuning. You might mimic the way your friends speak or even make scripts for your next improv skit. The possibilities are boundless and we've only scratched the surface of GPT's capabilities. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you want more, be sure to subscribe and leave a comment below with what you want me to make next.